Good morning. Oh, that was your, mm, I'm doing forever doing this. I'm forever pointing at the wrong thing. Pointing at the wrong thing I am. Here we go. And that's pointing at that. Now you're pointing at me. Hello. And I wish I could film what I'm filming with because it's really cool. So I'm we start in seven minutes. And I'm just right now getting ready what this morning it's for all ages. And so if you're a teacher or a um get, well, if you're a teacher, it's gonna help you. I'm talking to all my all our AIMSEC alumni. Um it covers all ages and it's a game you can play and we're going to play it with so please gather all your young learners we're going to show you ways of playing it i'm going to show you ways for all different ages so whatever age you are five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventy eighteen blah, 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 99 it's lots of different games lots of different ages but and today we're going to really make you think so Going, I'm just sharing that six minutes, six minutes till we start. Gather your troops, get everyone together. <clears throat> and while we're, that's not what I wanted to do. While we're gathering our troops, I'm sharing, sharing the live to get as many people as possible to have access to it. Sharing the live, sharing the love. Right, so. Um, Maths, games with maths, games with maths for all ages. There we go. And post that. That is now on the Bubbly Maths page. If you haven't liked it, please do like it. And now I have to share it. That's the Bubbly Maths page. That is nothing. We don't want that. This is nothing we don't want that that is okay this is in the group that's great now i'm just going to do um <clears throat> yes a watch party now make sure i do it in the right place keep doing it in the wrong place i don't want to share in a group it's already in a group we're going to share it on my timeline because i haven't managed to get to everybody to let them know to come to this group yet so what am i going to say about it learning maths by playing games math oops maths by playing games for all ages so um four minutes to go gather around everyone gather around the warm internet fire and and we're going to start playing the game for all ages and then start see if I've got that right this time. Ah, then that substitutes that page, which means I'm on the live and not on the group. So now I've got to go and open up the group again. And that's so that, now I'm gonna get another screen. I'm going to go crazy and I'm gonna get another screen so that I can have my Zoom screen where I'm looking, I can see what you can see on one screen and have the other things on another screen so I can see both things at the same time. Now, how adventurous is that? I think that's what it's going to take and that's it's necessary. Also working on considering using Teams and then I've got to have some other jiggery pokery software to get the Teams videos onto Facebook. Oh, and of course, YouTube. So it's all very exciting. Right, who's here? Somebody's here, but I don't know who it is. Say hello, whoever you are, you're welcome. And welcome to all the new uh, people that have joined in the last couple of days. This is the Monday to Friday morning, nine in the morning, we do a live every morning for the young learners and it's three minutes to go. This is suitable for all ages. So gather round. And while we're waiting, we've got, um, please do tell people about this group. This group is dedicated to helping, especially at the moment, to helping with maths learning at home. And so that's we do sessions for the learners and we do sessions for the grown-ups and help help with siblings to be able to get guidance on how, how siblings can help the younger learners and um and what else have we got let's see have we got anybody that's still not there that's still not there we've got two minutes to go we'll be starting in two minutes 
Here we go. This is the group I'm looking for. So please do join or tell everybody about making maths fun for kids of all ages. And put a, if you're finding this useful, please put a post on your profile and tell people about it and encourage people to join the group. We've had quite a few people. Oh, let's let's let somebody's come in over the last few hours. Okay, and Ranjan, Ranjan is now welcome, Ranjan. Uh, yeah, it's daytime for Ranjan at the moment. I think should be depending. Yeah, it might be daytime for Ranjan at the moment. I'd have to know where he is in the world. Uh, let's see. So now we go to the group. And we've got one minute to go before we start. We might have some new posts to approve. Oh, Veer and Rian. Okay, Veer and Rian have made a trailer. So I'm just approving that. Go and check that out in the group. And okay, math and munch post. It's a math and munch post. We have a vegan brownie batter math and munch post so absolutely we're going to go with that kenzie thank you very much so chocolatey ooey gooey goodness and it's math and munch go for it so it is now nine o'clock when we are going to start hooray and whoopsie wrong yeah that's it get that one no pending post, that's not what I wanted to do, discussion. Right, okay. So, welcome. We're going to play games. Oh, we're going to play games with just that little bit of extra thinking today. So first of all, we're going to play the game we've been playing all weekend. Well, all weekend, we, we've only proper played it twice. And we're going to play all the different games that are in this resource. So this is on the Aiming High. I'll start with this. It's in the discussion, it's in the announcements post, and it's in the pinned post on the page as well I'm just gonna show no you're not no we're not we'll show you the links at the end but it's in this resource so if you download this then you have all these other questions and you can just follow the guide and you can, there's lots of different games to play we're going to play all of them right now just just start them and show you how to go about it and then you can go from one game to another to another and then there's some really deep questions Ooh, at the end. So I'm going to now, okay, that's on, oh, I've got to play it. That's right, that's the bit I'm missing. So I can see if you've got any questions and right, we're on the live. So Noel, hello, Noel, good to see you. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> not feeling intimidated at all now. Noel is like, it's like, it's like a polymath. He knows everything, but not just knowing, he understands and he's really good at explaining to others. And he, he's um, worked in a, an amazing museum in the north of England called Life. And in that, they have some amazing maths. So if, you, if you're in the north of England, once we can do so, please go and visit Life and get some Great. Oh, Karen Wintel. Hello, Karen. Any feedback would be greatly appreciated. These resources come basically from Tony Beard. And, and if you're not going using the Aiming High website, please use it, Karen. It's a great resource. I recommend it to your teachers. Have a look at it, obviously, first and only recommend it if you agree. Um, right. So we're going to play this game. Ready. 15 game. 15 game. So I've said hello to the people that are here. I haven't got any uh, wrong screen. So we're going to play the 15 game one more time. So you can cut out the, the pieces. Well, if you get the resource, you get that, or you can just make them yourself. You can make them out of card, or you can just draw them on a piece of paper. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoopsie, we don't need 10, just nine numbers. And what you've got to do, is you've got to take it in turns. So we've got team A, the team, I'm gonna call it team B for blue and team B for black, kidding, team P for purple. And you've got to choose three numbers and you must be three numbers. And for, uh, by the way, for early years, if, you, if, you, if you've got really little ones, I'm going to do a session in, 
in just in 57 minutes for really little ones where we're not going to use three numbers, we're going to use two numbers and even one number depending. Um, so we'll do that in at 10 o'clock in, in an hour's time. Right, so that's that, right. Now, so three numbers, so, and you take it in turns. So the first person, let's say it's got to be three numbers, you've got to bear in mind, you have to, well, let's just start with nine. Whoopsie, team blue with blue. Team blue starts with nine, and team purple is decided to go with one. Okay, and now team, mm, oh, we have to have three numbers. So the way I was playing it, ah, yeah, that's something. If you were playing it over the weekend with me, you'll actually see that I wasn't using that rule. That rule matters. That, I just spotted that last night when I was introducing this for today. So it does actually, if you played it over the weekend, I would have said at this point, I would have said you better put that better, whoopsie, that better be a six. But actually it doesn't have to be because they need to have three numbers. So I've chosen a one so, so that because there's only nine can only use one to six to get to the end. So I don't know you find your own strategy and then you put down three numbers and the idea is to stop the other person from getting um, to 15, but also to get to 15. So purple wants to get to 15, blue wants to get to 15, but you also want to stop the other person from getting to 15. Right, that is the 15 game. So play that and where is my eraser? It's here, it looks like a dog, look at it, it looks like a bone. <laughs> It's like a doggy bone. Right, the next game is called, it's aimed at upper primary. When you've got your words, okay. It's aimed at upper primary and using these odd letters, laugh, that's not quite a word, but using this combination of letters, let's say, there's only one word, well, it's, well laugh is like, shortened version, a slang version of laugh, I suppose. The rest are all definitely words. Using those, the idea is, so in the same way as we had before, so I'm going to write them out. Well, we can look, we can take them from here. We're going to put them out on the board. So team blue, and you can do this as a, as a team in class as well. You can do this with many people. So, okay, we're gonna choose eat. And then we're going to be strategic because the way to win is to use, have a line that, where the word use all three T's. So let's see. So team purple can prevent team blue from using T by choosing a T letter, but then there's also E and there's also A. Well, team blue have already used E and A. So if we can only choose one, let's choose one. Let's go with L-O-T. And that way we stop them from using T, but we have a chance of using L and O. So if we can get three words that, let's see how we can do this now. now so we've still got, blue has still got E and A but we want to use E and A, and we want to use a word, there isn't a word that has E, A and L. So we'd have to go for one word. This is quite deliberate. What if we go with, ooh, look at that one. If we go with, no, that, yes. If we go with line, L-I-N-E, then we have to use the E letter, for the third one. Hmm, doesn't leave our options open, but it stops purple team from using L, purple team can't use T. So in order to have three letters, what is purple team now going to, what's the, the letter, the word that purple team are going to choose? They've now got the only let, letter they've got now available is O. The word has to include O, I think. Let's see what, in order to win, all three words have to have the only letter left is the letter O, and in this one, the only letter left is the letter E. So what are you going to do? So that's the game. And 
test different names. So now here's the um, here's the thing. Can you devise a strategy? Can you figure out a what to do so that you never lose? Okay, and then explain it. Can you explain that now? If you don't have someone at home to explain it to, please do explain it in the group. Please do it, it, do a video or write it out, whatever. Please do share it with other learners because other people are doing this. And we, um, especially right now, people in South Africa are doing this because we've got a lot of teachers from the Aiming High course, which is what what this is the aiming this is a resource from the aiming high website and these teachers just like the teachers in the uk are helping their learners with distance learning so they are using these resources so all of those people in aimsec please do get your learners to send in their ideas send in their strategies and please do share them on the group that would be absolutely amazing and now we're going to go to lower lower secondary which is ages 11 to 14 and let's see where's my eraser let's get rid of that oh well, you can't see it anyway so it doesn't matter i suppose so the next one is you can see that it's not in focus Bring it closer. There we go. So you can download this. It's in the it's in the um, the link above. You can download it and, and see it for yourself. You don't have to actually. And then if you've got an Android, if you search for Aiming High Aimsec, um, then you can actually download all of these onto your onto your phone. They need updating. They're being updated daily because these um, home learning um, exp explanations are being updated daily. So update them daily if you can. If not, there's a lot still, there's a lot already on there. So, oh, I'm not gonna let you see that because you're doing, okay, so there's a connection with this one. There's a connection, ah, I like this one. There is a connection with the 15 game. What we're gonna do is take the numbers one to nine. You might've played this one before. Okay. You've got to put in all the numbers, one to nine. And that includes the diagonal, I believe. Yes, and diagonals. And the sum of all the columns, every single column has to add up to 15. As you can see, remember we had to have our 15 game had to add up to 15. All the rows have to add up 15. And all the diagonals have to add up to 15. Okay, just lower that teeny tight, teeny bit, okay. And we can only use the numbers one to nine. So that's your challenge. And the, the, the extra challenge is that bear in mind that there is a connection between this and the 15 game. In fact, there's a connection between this and the letter game as well. Right, that's the activity for um, lower secondary, which is about 11 to 14 year olds. So if that's you, have a go. Well, even, even so, I mean, have a go at all of them. I enjoy playing all of the games, even the ones for the younger learners. Okay, which we're gonna do at 10 o'clock. Right now, the next one is called the game of jam. And what you want to do, it's on the resource. But the game of jam is, we're gonna draw this shape. So we're gonna start with a kite. Start with a kite. And then we're going to make, okay, then we're gonna straight line down the middle. So it's symmetrical. It doesn't, I don't, don't I'd like you to decide whether or not the symmetry matters. Here, it's not very symmetrical because I'm drawing it on this board. And then so we've got we're dividing that into four triangles, and now we're adding some more triangles. But if you notice, that's definitely not symmetrical. But let's see if it works anyway, even though my lovely 
artwork isn't very symmetrical. We've got a node here or a vertex. Call them, we'll call them a node for now. Um, or we'll call them dots. Every one of these dots is a town. Now, now that we've got that, we're going to use two different colors. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a color and highlight a whole straight road. So I think blue's decided, blue wants to have, it doesn't matter if they go through several towns, it's just got to be the whole straight road. So this blues said, right, I'm gonna get this one. I'm gonna get this one in the middle here. So purple says, well, I haven't played this game before. I don't really know what to do, but I'm going to go, mm, what, well, I want to include this, this one here in the middle. And that's, that's not a straight line. It doesn't, see, it doesn't show it very clearly, but that's not a straight line. That to there is a straight line. So maybe I should actually draw it more clearly, more more exaggerated. So I'm just going to draw it again here. More exaggerated, much more exaggerated. I'm going to make it like that. And then we've got like that. Nope. I'm going to go kind of up there. That's a straight line down there. That's a straight line. Then we've got that going there. And we've got that, that's not straight and that's not straight, that going there, okay? So the straight lines are that one down there and then these are just little short sections. That's, those are the, that's the only other one that goes through multiple towns. Okay, so purple's decided to go for the middle. Well, blue said what, and the, what the winner The winner, the first player to color three roads going to or through the same town wins. So through or to the same town. Well, we've already got blue's gonna go here. That's one, two. Blue's gonna go here. Oh, blue's got that twice. And now purple's got to go into, into offensive. Purple wants to get three towns going through the same line. Hmm, I'm not sure. I think, I think, I think, I think. Not sure what's gonna happen here, but I think blue has won this one. So blue's won that one. So the idea is you want to prevent that from happening. You want to, be, uh, make it happen yourself, but purple's job is to prevent that from happening. So how could purple have prevented that from happening? And um, I have to be quite frank. I know it's a simple one, but I haven't actually played this before because I wanted to play it live so that I would have the experience that you're having playing it for the first time. So the, the drawing is here. I'm going to do it one more time because it's kind of hard. I've just what I've discovered is it's kind of hard to do it on the board so that you can see. So you can see which lines are straight and which lines aren't. If you use this, then it's actually a lot easier to see that that is not a straight line. It's not so easy to see on here. So let's maybe make it a lot bigger. Or if you and also if you use a ruler, it's really super hard to use a ruler. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start with that one. That is not a straight line. That is not, oh, see now those look straight. So the angles are super important. I'm just, that there, I'm going to make that there. That is not a straight line, not a straight line. And then, I mean, that is, but it, that is not. So maybe make it more exaggerated that could maybe make that more that to there. And then this kind of comes down a bit. In fact, it could even just go across like that. And that's going to go up to the top here. And then that one there, I'm going to make it much more 
exaggerated there so that you can see see those aren't straight lines either those aren't supposed to be straight lines so maybe they have to come further down so if you can see if you draw it it's, it's super important to draw it in such a way that there's no ambiguity as i've discovered that is a straight line there you go so the only straight lines just so that you're that's not right i've done that wrong those two aren't like that at all these two are they come from here so that's okay there's no question there that they're not straight lines so those are I'm going to do it one more time copying from that one now So that's straight, that's straight, that's straight. Okay, now I'm gonna go as best I can here. That is not straight. Those are two separate lines. Then we've got, I'm gonna go, mm, I might just go quite high up there instead. And then that's, I'm gonna bring that down there. I'm not doing it the same as the other picture because it's actually a lot harder to do if you're drawing it out. So just to be absolutely clear, so those that's a, that's a straight line, that's a straight that's a straight line, and that's a straight line. And those are the only three straight lines. Right. Okay. That's that one. So you've got to cir circle three straight lines. Be the first one to circle three three straight lines again. Do you? Can you? Can you do it? Um, can you? Is there a way of playing it so you can always win? Now, for the last one, we're going, for, we're going to play all three games and compare all three games. So you've got the 15 game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you've got the, got the 15 game, you've got the an online game. So you've got eat, and laugh, etc. That's one, that's two. Now this is for upper secondary. So this is for, okay, this is basically lower secondary. I didn't say the previous one was for um, basically up to the age of about uh, 16 and this, this anyone can do, this is a challenge for anyone. So then you've got the three by three magic square. I'm gonna add something else into the mix, noughts and crosses. And then we've got the jam game, which is that crazy shape. Can you see what I'm writing here? And you've got the jam game, which is the crazy shape. There we go. So that's the fifth one. You've got those five things. And the question is, we want to know what the equivalence is of these five games. And within that, so in other words, equivalence is, is what, what matches, what is the same within each one. And there's a really, Okay, we've got a big word here. I'm going to write it out. Isomorphism. So if you're at that level of doing math, don't worry about this if you're younger. It's not, this is something that you will be able to get your head around once you, if you decide to pursue, which frankly, why wouldn't you in my world? But I mean, it's fine if you, this is not, this is, I'm talking to the older learners here, ones who have really decided they want to get their heads around math. So and if you're a parent and this is over your head, don't worry about it. The idea of isomorphism is, it's a nice big word, and it's the Greek words, iso, but, but, well, let me write it down as well. Iso meaning the same. And morph meaning change. 
morph is something that we're quite familiar with in our world. There's even a little little cartoon chat called morph. That means change. I'm going to read the word so I don't fluff it up, okay? I'm going to read the meaning of it. Because you might have noticed that I can fluff things. I do actually help need help. This is one of the things I do. When I perform, I do tell the children. If I say something wrong when I do tutoring, like, don't stay silent thinking that you've misunderstood it because I've said something wrong. Things come out. I think one thing and say another. So I'm just going to read it. And isomorphism is a tremendously important in mathematics. It's about making connections. So when things look different, then you're finding the similarities. It carries with it the crucial information about the object while discarding irrelevant information. So again, when you're doing the word puzzles about the train going at night, 40 kilometers per hour from A to B and take so much time. It's a, the, you're taking out the bits that are irrelevant. Like for example, it's a train. Where well, it could be any, any moving, anything that's moving. What matters is it's how many kilometers per hour that matters, but it doesn't matter that, that it's a train. So the story around it just lets you know it's speed, but you've already said it's, it's 60 kilometers per hour. So you know that it's speed. So that's what you're looking for. You, the train is just fluff. Um, and in this case, the five contexts are, don't seem to necessarily be connected. Numbers, letters, magic square, um, tic-tac-toe. Did I say that was tic-tac-toe? And geometry, looks like geometry, right? So, so in this case, they, they, they're, 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 all those things are to a great extent irrelevant. It doesn't matter that they're all different. It's the relationships and the structure that they all have that what you're looking for, you'll find the key in finding out how to always win even more powerfully, how to always, for there to not be a winner. You, you kind of get bored of tic-tac-toe when you realize, oh, I, I, nobody ever wins. And then you kind of stop playing, except you play with younger learners who don't know that yet. And it's important with the longer, younger learners to allow them as well. Just, think, just be encouraging, maybe win sometimes. And don't, well, you want to get with the younger learners to the point where they work out for themselves how to always have a draw. So, and if you haven't worked out how to always have a draw on any of these things, just keep going until you do. It's, it's really, it's, it's, it's fun. It's doing maths and it's fun. It's games. It's just, you're just playing games until you work out how to always have a draw. And then it's a really great way to help younger people learn as well. So you can be an encourager. And even though you've learned how to play it, then you take, take it to the next level and help somebody else get to that point. So you don't show them, if you show them, you're taking away the discovery and the discovery is really important. And, um, and so some of this, the, the element, the, the, the concept of isomorphism is, is, can be discovered by people of all levels. So if you're an older learner, uh, 16 to 18 and above, then you can help younger learners experience isomorphism by playing all these five games and depending how old I mean if they're really young you're not going to play all five games you're just going to play with numbers and once you, they've got you've got your words then you can play with letters and that's great okay that's that's the content we've covered so you can review this if you don't, don't remember how to do some of it if you want to just have a, a run over it again and all you have to do is download it from Aiming High site. So I'm going to turn this around now. So it's not on our YouTube channel yet. This particular activity is not on the YouTube channel yet. I'll tell you where it is, will be on. It'll be on the Bubbly Maths one, but that's being worked on at the moment. So I can't give you a link. Uh, da, 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 da. The link is, for all of this, is in the... Um, 
is in the announcements above. You don't have to write it down, but if you want to write it down, we have it all on there. And so that's, can we actually get this straight? There we go. There we go. Uh, so there's the YouTube channel, Mass Toys, has a few videos up yet, but eventually it will have videos for every single activity on the Aiming High website. The Aiming High is where all these activities are. So that's where you'll download that. And if you just go there, just um, today it's the 15 game. So just search for the 15 game and you'll get all these links to this information. 15 game. And then in, please do encourage people to join the group, making maths fun for kids of all ages so that they can join in every day in our, in our um, lives. And then also the, the AIMSEC SA Facebook page, if you just search for AIMSEC, it comes up. That has daily activities, daily little memes to, that you can just have a bit of fun with maths if you just want to do something stimulating. So what shall I do today? Just go to the AIMSEC Facebook page and there'll be a little activity to play every single day. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. Well, it, in half an hour, we'll be doing an activity for early years. So please join us for that. That's at 10 o'clock, London time, 11 South Africa time, and everywhere else in the world, please work it out. I know you, most Central Europe, it's 10 o'clock as well. But Portugal, it's nine o'clock. So it just, Canary Islands, nine o'clock. I know that as well. So um, thank you for joining us and see you 10 o'clock and then eight o'clock tonight. That was it, that was the other thing. Eight o'clock tonight will be, will be preparation for tomorrow's activity, which will be at nine o'clock in the morning again. And it's eight, um, nine, 10, and eight in the evening every day. Thank you for joining. Have a wonderful day and see you later. Now, I say that, have a wonderful day. Now I'm going to look at Hola Angelines, my cousin joined. Helen, thank you for joining us. And what else have we got? Have we got anybody else on here? I don't want to. That's there. Oh. Okay. All right. I'm going to send. I've forgotten how to pronounce her name. She's in. She's in Cyprus. If you're still on, had teeth, had teach, had teeth. I don't. I'll find out. We haven't actually had a conversation yet. But this woman is has some great ideas. She's been home educating her children and they decided to home educate by travel. I've got another friend I need to hook you up with as well who does exactly that. Well, not at the moment, obviously. They're holed up at the moment. But they, they travel and they travel with their children and Hatice wants to set up a school, some kind of learning and environment, which I don't know what it is yet. And these resources would, I think, be super helpful to you. So I'm gonna send her a message right now. And, um, and and yes, excellent. So that's, I'm gonna do that now. That's on the group. And do we have any others? Karen Wintle. So she's, I, I don't, no messages left. No messages left. So please do post your ideas. Our wonderful AIMSEC teachers, alumni, please do do these activities, get people to send in pictures, get people to send in their thoughts, their processes, how they've learned. And then we'll share, we'll share we'll just share them in the group or send them to um, put them in your WhatsApp groups and then we'll post them on here. It's up to you which way you do it. But if you post them straight in here, that would be amazing. And, um, and yeah, just share us what you do. And this week's challenge, toilet roll challenge. This week it is make a cube with the least amount of cuts. Now it wants to be a cube as in Every edge is the same length, every face is the same shape, I swear, and every vertex has the same number of faces on it or edges on it, which is, well, I'd like to know how many it is for a cube. A cube is, have I got a sample of a cube? This is a cuboid, so a cube, oh, here's one, here's one right here, there we go. I've got all this stuff on my desk for a good reason, so I can grab things when I need them. Cube. How many faces? That would be nice as well. How many faces? Find out the properties of a cube as well, especially for the younger learners. Count all the faces and be systematic. How many edges? 
and how many vertices. These are edges, that's a vertex, and that's a face. How many faces, how many edges, and how many vertices? And send us in your pictures and your ideas and make a little video of you doing it to make a cube out of a toilet roll. And we'll have another challenge next week, another toilet roll challenge next week. Now I've got to work out how to end the Zoom. And I will see you later in 27 minutes. I'll be on again for early years and lower primary. <laughs>